friends. You notice, and it is morning, you notice all my sunflowers are facing east. You see my shadow, I don't know if you can see my shadow on the ground, you see the shadows. The sun is coming up here and the sunflowers have all got their face toward the east. And what they're going to do as the sun comes up, they track the sun. And so by the uh, sundown today, all the faces are, are pointing toward the west. And from uh, sundown to sun up, the faces of the sunflowers turn back to the east and await the coming up of the sun. And then as the sun passes through, well then the, they track the sun through the sky again. But you know, it only happens until the buds open. Once the sunflower opens, they no longer track the sun. They face continually toward the east. Then you get the sunflowers. Now, that's kind of a great mystery in nature. And they say the reason is you have different genes expressing themselves at different times and the gene expression controls the movement of the sunflower. Well, I don't know all the science behind it, but I know this. When the sun comes up, the sunflowers are facing that way. Malachi 4.2, it said, The sun of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. If healing's coming from the sun, I want to be facing the sun of righteousness, don't you? And so our, our lesson this morning is on making choices. Because the body, it never, it never responds unless there is a decision made in the mind. Mind comes first, and then the body responds. Uh, watch my hand. Open, close, open, close, open, close, open, close. The brain is telling the hand, you know, connected through the neural, neural pathways, is telling the hand what to do. The decision always precedes the action. So the sunflower, of course, it, it's not a free moral agent. It can't make decisions like that. But nevertheless, God put it in the, in, the, uh, in the garden as an object lesson to teach us to keep our faces turned toward the, to the sun of righteousness. Now, if uh, you have something that comes between the flower and the sun, that's a problem. If you have something that comes between a man and the sun, that's a problem. In 2 Corinthians 4, 6, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Our face looking at His face. And nothing should come between and distract it. You know, the problem is that in living in the city, in an urban environment, in a metropolitan environment, there's so many distractions, so many things that, that can lead us away from Christ, can take our focus away from that which is real and which is true. And so if you're ever going to leave the city, what comes first is a decision. And that's uh, the subject of this morning, making decisions. Now I'm going to leave the sunflowers behind and uh, get some other lessons in the book of nature as we look at making decisions. This is Darlene out in the pepper patch. What she's doing is weaving this twine between the peppers and then tying it to the stakes. What that does, it keeps the pepper plants from uh, dragging in the dirt, it gives a lot of uh, airflow, keeps disease down, makes the peppers happy, get a better crop. Same with people. If you're not careful, you get down in the dumps, kind of drag on the ground, and that's not healthy, that is not happy. 1722 of Proverbs, the merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit will drop your bones. So the Lord comes along with his precious promises and weaves them into our life. Helps us to see that there is something more than what we see with our physical eyes and it imparts to us a spiritual blessing. So Darlene's here blessing the peppers with airflow, uh, good sunshine, good healthy conditions for growing peppers. You know, the, uh, the placement, it's, it's evening now. The placement of the camera is just where it was this morning. But this morning, all the sunflowers were facing east. Now, as the sun is going down in the western sky, the sunflowers are facing west. So as the sun rose this morning, sunflowers, uh, they, uh, they focused in on the sun. And as it moved across the sky, they tracked right with it. And now it's about to go down in the west, and the sunflowers are looking that direction. You know, the Bible is replete with encouragement and uh, direction to keep our eyes on the sun. This is where the light comes from. John 1, 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And that's where the healing is too, right? Malachi 4, 2, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. 
So it's good to see the light. Encouragement, verse after verse after verse, focus on the Savior. Hebrews 12, 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. When John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And the disciples themselves, after the Mount of Transfiguration experience, when the glory faded, it says in Matthew 17, verse 8, they saw no man save Jesus only. So it's good to have a, a tunnel vision for that which is above. Now, the sunflowers, they give me a second lesson. It's not just keep your eyes on the Savior. Keep your eyes on the Son of God. There's another lesson. Because at the end of the day, like right now, west, they're kind of facing west. At the end of the day, when that sun goes down during the night, those sunflowers turn back. And when that sun comes up, they're facing the east again. That's the lesson. That when you uh, feel overcome, when the darkness creeps into your soul, you look back to where you last saw the light. That's what you do. You look back to where you last saw the light. So look back in your past experience. See where God was doing something for you and dwell on that. Concentrate on that. So here in the book of nature, it's a blessing to be here because everything here points you toward the Savior. Sometimes, you know, in the city living, uh, there are a lot of distractions that might direct your attention away from Christ. But here, everything in the garden, the book of nature, is a, uh, is, is a love letter from the Creator that says, hey, look, I care. Matthew 10, 30, even the hairs on your head, head are numbered. I know all about you and I care. Just keep your eyes on me. So friends, let's let the book of nature teach us something today. When the sun comes up, let our faces be turned east. And when the sun goes down in the west, let our faces return, waiting for the sun to come up the next morning in your life and mine. God bless. I hope you have a nice evening. Morning, friends. Uh, this is my kitchen. <laughs> Just behind me is my kitchen sink. I spend a lot of time back here each day, especially in the canning season and uh, uh, when we're, uh, we're in here quite a bit. Darlene's right now, she's making pickles. We're canning uh, pear sauce, tomatoes. Kitchen's a busy and a hot place. We don't have air conditioning. We just have a nice fan, but we don't, uh, it gets hot. But it's a great pleasure to be in the kitchen with my wife, making food that we'll be eating all winter and through next year. So the sunflowers this morning are out there. They're facing east, and as the sun's up, sunflowers are watching the sun throughout the day. When night falls, they'll turn back to the east. Now, the distractions of life, they are compounded, multiplied, according to the environment in which we choose to live. City living is tough. I know because I was born and raised in a city environment. This is a picture of the way Atlanta looked back in the late 70s. That's when I was getting out of the military. I was driving up Interstate 75 back to Atlanta. Uh, after three years in the military, I saw the city and I thought, there's a lot of opportunity in that place for me. And I, it, it, it appealed to every fiber of my being, the opportunities, the, the, the things you can do in the city. I really look forward to reintegrating into civilian life and uh, taking advantage of the things in the city. And then I uh, live next door to a bar. This is an actual picture of Manuel's Tavern, which is just across the street. Darlene and I were living in Atlanta. Spent a lot of time in the evenings in that bar. And slowly, I'm not going into details, slowly my life began to disintegrate. Uh, it was just alcohol. Uh, secular living, 10,000 distractions on every side. I wasn't a Christian, not at all, but you know, I, I wanted something that I didn't have. You don't have to be a Christian to have a desire for peace, security, permanency, stability. That's inborn in every heart. And I wanted those things and didn't have them. Our marriage wasn't doing well, my health wasn't good, my mind wasn't stable. It was just a royal mess. And when Darlene's father died, we went up to see the land. I'd been there before. Went up to see the land, 
and I kind of made a decision. I told Darlene, I said, look, why don't we, why don't we move out here? Why don't we move out of the city and move up here? It's 20 acres, no house on it. This was her family's land, 20 acres of land, way out in the country, in the middle of nowhere. Just beautiful, but you know, no, no, uh, no house, no, you know, it was, it was just barren land. And I think that both of us were so tired of the struggle in city life that Darlene agreed, and then we moved. But I share that to say there came a point when I had to make a decision because every action is preceded by a decision. My decision was not for the right motive. I mean, I wasn't going because I loved God and wanted to get closer to Him in nature. I was going because I was sick of my life in Atlanta and I wanted something better. And I think the Lord used that, right? Even though our motives may be wrong, to get us into the country so we can begin a relationship with Him that it's hard to have in the city because of all those distractions, all those, all those things that are happening around us. And so Darlene and I, we, uh, we made the decision. And then before long, we made the move. But my point is the decision comes first. Now, I know the city, in a way, my mother loved the city. She loved being near the hospital. She was in poor health. She loved, near being, 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 uh, loved, near, be, loved being near the grocery stores. You know, uh, if she had a medical emergency, she could call an ambulance, be in the hospital in just a short time. There were so many reasons she had for living in the city and a lot of reasons she had for not wanting to move out to the country. My mom had been raised in the country, middle of nowhere, a place called Oneida, Tennessee, and she didn't want to go back. And it was hard for her to uh, finally make that decision to try to move to a, small, a more rural location. But it's hard. The city, it holds out a promise. But the problem is it, it never delivers. You know, you go to a New Year's Eve party. You have every expectation it's going to be a big night. And then when it's over, it's like you feel flat, kind of deflated. It always holds out the promise. A lot of glitter, a lot of tinsel. A lot of uh, surface sensory appeal, but at the end of it all, it just leaves you flat. It holds out the promise, but never delivers. The country, it doesn't hold out a great promise in the beginning. It just, you know, you see trees, you see flowers, you see some wildlife. And, but, you know, as you get the experience, my friends, it always delivers. It always gives you something that is food for the soul. So if you've been thinking about maybe making the move to the country, if you're in the city now, and you know, I suppose if you're watching this, you probably have some interest in nature. You probably have some interest in spiritual things. If you're uh, locked up in the city and you want to make the great escape, first, first, part, uh, first, uh, first step is the decision. I want out. I'm sick of being sick. I want something better. And then let the Lord handle your business from that point forward. He'll make a way to get you out of the city and into His creation. And when you're there, He begins to speak to you in a way that was almost impossible back in the city. So may you uh, be blessed today in all that you do. May you find that you have a never-failing helper at your right hand. He may be invisible, but the Lord is always near us to help us and to heal us. And that's my prayer for you. You'll find help, you'll find healing, and you'll find, uh, you'll find the, the way out if you're living there in the city environment. Have a nice day.